You take one quarterback in, you take another one out. You take another one in, and you take it all about. That is the transfer portal. Okay. You are locked on Huskers. Your daily podcast on the Nebraska Cornhuskers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Hey, gang, DB here, Locked On Huskers. Thank you for making Locked On Huskers your first watch and listen each and every single day. We appreciate you, everydayers, who come hang out with us and consume. Uh, and be a part of this conversation uh, that we're having here. Greatly appreciate you for what you do. Uh, first watch and listen, Locked on Huskers. Your Huskers every day. Your second one should probably be Locked on Sports today. Uh, you can find the details there. <laughs> right there and watch next um, on the board. I, a couple of things are in play. That the transfer portal has... As it evolves, and let's be clear to call the transfer portal fluid, because that seems to be the most appropriate of things to call it, in that uh, there are facts, and then there are opinions, and then there are new standard means of operation, and then there are new ways of doing business, as we talked about in previous episodes, that as this evolves and as Nebraska evolves in it, right, that Nebraska has to be reactive to the, the the climate, but it has to be proactive in its approach. So it has to know what is it that this transfer portal thing, as it evolves, what will it be to Nebraska football? And in that, finding out that big finance is the, is, is the current engine that moves the transfer portal through NIL, there are a couple of things in play. And what Nebraska is finding out is this talent is as loyal to you as you are to it. So if you are the only option, then people work from being the only option. If there are options, plural, then everybody works with the understanding that there are multiple options. And Nebraska, for all of its resources, and we are all thrilled when it comes to Husker Nation that you're going into the portal with a plan. And with full acknowledgement of resource, there's tons of money. Just, there's just lots of money. Once you acknowledge that money is in play and that folks are doing business, business, then you have to find people who want to do business with you the way they want to do business. And th- there's some mutuality. It used to be that college football recruiting was one-sided. It was one-sided shopping in full, right? It, it rare. You know, there was, it used to be that the schools at the top and the upper echelon uh, echelon of of, of college football had their first choice. And a lot of it was regional because the only people that knew you were the people in your area and the people that you could get to. Well, that's not how recruiting works now. And that's certainly not how college football works now. And that everything is digital and everything is immediate and everything is accessible. So if you find a talented college quarterback, you're not the only person that found it. You're not the only person that found them. And if you're the only, if you're able, if a college quarterback is able to be recruited and there is a money system, there is a money, a financial amount set on what it takes for that person to be in your program. Once that is known, then that number isn't just for you. That number is the number. And as we know that in negotiation, that that number changes based on value and market. Well, in talking about Dylan Rayola, and if you're talking about the number one quarterback prospect in the country, who was recruited by every top program in the country, negotiated with every top program in the country, with a full understanding of a family that's not only in the business, but active in the business, that is college football and pro football. The negotiations that are in play. Dylan Rayola knows his value system. He knows what his value is to himself, which is, is different. It's different business now. The Rayola name is in the building. 
And we've done this dance before. One, acknowledging he's the top quarterback prospect. And that Nebraska currently is not the top passing program in college football. It's also not the top developer of NFL quarterbacks in the in, in college football. Th- th- those are statements that you can you can buck on, but I'm open to that. But if he's the number one talent and he's not going to the number one passing program or the number one football program, then he is choosing for other reasons. And that's fine. All fine and good. As a matter of fact, it's what it, it's, it's what Nebraska's brand is almost, that it's not for everyone, but the people that it's for, it's exceptional. There's no place like it when it's the place that you should choose and want to choose. The Loreola has options. What we found is that you go outside of your circle, you go outside of your neighborhood, you go outside of what, you, what you're comfortable with, and then you reconsider. And for young athletes, I'm speaking from the coach to athlete conversation that I would have for, for young athletes who are trying to find their way. And again, this is new for the NIL and transfer portal. It's both, they're both new in full to athletes. High school quarterbacks now with prep programs and star camps and recruiting sources and sites and being able to, to, to make business deals while being underage. The power spectrum has changed. And Dylan Rola has the ability. And I'm not sure how many people who will see this can, can, can put themselves in the shoes of Dylan Rail. Being the number one player at your position with a name that is familiar and having all of the top programs in the country at your doorstep, all of them with check in hand, all of them with different amounts, and having a dad who's in the game, in the business. Uh, it's Football's the family business uncle that's in the family business and to say that making the choice would be easy i've said all along and this is the thing that gets lost on folks and i and i want to get into it that you're talking about teenagers trying to make the most important decisions of their life to that point and to think that a 16 year old was put in the spotlight 15 year old then 16-year-old. And Dylan Rowe is not the same person he was two years ago. Today, he's a different person. He's a different young man than he was two years ago. So we asking, we're asking him to make a decision, know the decision, commit to the decision, stay loyal to it, all while evolving at the highest rate and level of his life. It's a lot to ask for, but it looks like that decision is coming. We'll toward the break and we'll come back. I want to talk about Kyle McCord and kind of what's going on there. But before we do that, Rico, kind sir, if you would, please let them know about Prize Picks. Thanks, DP. Prize Picks is the largest daily fantasy sports platform in North America. They're the easiest and most exciting way to play DFS. It's just you against the numbers. Instead of battling thousands of other players, including pros and sharks, you pick more than or less than on two to six player stat projections and watch the winnings roll in. With the basketball season here, you can now pick combo projections across football and basketball from the Specials League, a league created specifically for combo projections that includes two or more players from different sports or leagues. For example, LeBron James and Travis Kelsey add a 10 and a half combo of three pointers made and receptions. Prize Picks even offers a reboot policy so that your entries stay in play even if one of your players gets injured. For football and basketball games, if you have a player who exits the game in the first half and doesn't return in the second, that player is rebooted. Prize Picks is the only daily fantasy sports platform with an injury insurance policy. Go to prizepicks.com slash locked on college and use the code locked on college for a first deposit match up to a hundred dollars. Back to you, DP. Thanks, sir. Thank you, sir. We'll go to break. And when we come back, it's Kyle McCord. Is he in? Is he out? 
and why. We'll talk about those on Lockdown Hustle. <laughs> Let's get it. Go Big Red. And listen, in talking about the transfer portal and other, listen, Kyle McCord is a known entity. It's a known product. The values are in play that this is a Big Ten quarterback with success in the Big Ten, high level of success in the Big Ten. He was recruited heavily. You don't end up at Ohio State on a humble. No, he had put in the work and had built his his own name, image, and brand into an Ohio State quarterback and then going into and, listen, and no easy path becoming the starting quarterback at Ohio State, the Ohio State. And then having a season that, quite frankly, listen, aside from, from, from not getting the job done at Michigan, and that's not a, uh, you know, losing, Ohio State losing to, to Michigan, Certainly cannot be put on Kyle McCord, and if and even if they did, it still wouldn't decrease his value to Nebraska. So Kyle McCord, in changing his environment and saying, you know what, as good as Ohio State's been for me, I'm, I'm I, you know I played in the game of the season. I was starting quarterback in the most important game of the college season that he wants to change and to make that change. And listen, in this day and age, if if higher state's not willing to pay what everybody else is willing to pay, then again, remember what I just said, we're still talking about young men making decisions that will affect them, their families and, and their teammates in full. Kyle McCord is making a, a, a generational decision a million-dollar decision. And to get from it, he knows that if I have that kind of value, then I then get to decide who I deal with and how. And then he gets to make rules because here's the thing. This thing could have been set up differently. It wasn't. But as it evolves, some of the of the people at the top of, the, of, of, this, of this pyramid get to make decisions and get to put rules into play that don't currently exist and say, listen, I'm I'm one of the top five available football players in the country. And if I'm going to come to your school, I I, I'm, I I should be the guy. And then you have to ask other questions. Well, why would you be willing to pay millions of dollars to somebody who's not guaranteed to start? Like, why are you giving? That's the rookie of the whole rookie spectrum thing for the NFL. Why would you give the highest amount of money to somebody who hasn't produced yet? But that player doesn't want to be drafted by somebody that doesn't plan on playing him or doesn't plan on using him. And Kyle McCord, I would I, listen. We none of us can speak for Kyle McCord or his family. The young man visited Nebraska, and the reports, and I, we should probably put all of these in air quotes. The reports was that he was that he was in. And right about the same time, the report started to say that, well, wait, Nebraska may be back in the rail pool. And then it becomes, well, what, wait a minute. You're going to marry me, but you're not really going to marry me. You're going to date me, but you're not really, you're going to date somebody else too? And we're talking, again, we're talking about college students making business decisions on the same level and, ap- and, and altitude and with, with the same aptitude of millionaires like the people who are making decisions on who gets this money have created fortunes for themselves to put themselves in a position where they had millions of dollars to put into this pool and their understanding and and acumen business acumen says that this person has value for a thing that i care about thing for a thing that has value to me in this case it's nebraska football kyle mccord I would imagine that people made decisions and said, listen, this is a guy that can change the football program. The team becomes better. The program becomes better. The community becomes better because Kyle McCord would be a part of it. And if you tell Kyle McCord that, and then you know, he makes a decision. And I know I said if, so we'll let people speak for themselves. But if Kyle McCord is told, yes, you're the guy and you're worth millions to us, even on a one-year deal, that we are now in, in, the, in the business, we are still in the business of, of picking the next Kyle McCord 
and we have what we feel like is an opportunity to 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 bring on somebody who was the number one player at your position and have him for the next foreseeable future. Not everybody wants to be in that pool when you can be the king rather than being CEO, co-CEO and having that thing breathing down your back and having that thing. And listen, let me say this. <laughs> this whole competition thing that Cowboy Court doesn't want to comp compete. No, it's not that he doesn't want to compete. You shouldn't have to. Now, everybody competes. You're going to go out there and make plays. And if you don't make plays, don't make plays. If you don't believe you can make plays, don't give them millions of dollars. Like there's a there's a circular there's a circular thing that goes on here. But listen, the reality is, if I'm Kyle McCord, and I'm just speaking from from my vantage, that when I was being recruited, the value system that was in play for me was different than my teammates, and the people who accepted scholarships the same as I did, did it for different reasons. They had different paths. I would say that, you know, I was grateful. I was extremely grateful. I did. This was the best offer I could get. We weren't being offered that kind of money. So it wasn't a part of the discussion. Before you jump on the anti Kyle McCord train and you rant and say, well, geez, you know, he didn't want to compete. He didn't want, well, listen, let the young man make the best decision for him because He's in a unique position. Nebraska was in a unique position. They had a chance to get two high-level competitors at the same position. But in current business, in the current vacuum, decisions have to be made. And people, some people will agree with Nebraska, some won't. Some will think this is perfect. Some will think, nope, don't want to deal with it. I just want to be the dude. I want to be the dude. Because this may be the only opportunity in Kyle McCord's life where he gets to make that decision and say, you know what? Because if he goes pro, you get drafted, you go where you go, and you got what you got. Even if he went to Heisman, he's still not. You know, there, there have been three, four, a handful of quarterbacks I can name who literally could dictate who was going to draft them and who, who wouldn't. In college, through NIL and the transfer court, Kyle McCord has the ability to choose who he's going to play for and how. That's what he's doing. Before we go to break, Rico Kinsor, super producer, would you let him know about FanDuel? Thanks, DP. As the weather gets colder, the NFL offers stay hot on FanDuel. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 money line bet. That's 150 bucks if your team wins. If you've been thinking about joining FanDuel, there's no better time to get in on the action. The app is so easy to use. There's a wide range of betting options, including spreads, player props, over-unders, and more. So visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and kick off the NFL season. FanDuel, official partner of the NFL. Back to you, DP. Thank you, sir. And it's a good one. And again, you know, lots to talk about. The wide receiver room is 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 fluid as well at the University of Nebraska. We will go to break, and when we come back, we'll talk about the wide receiver room and how it's impacted by this quarterback uh, in and out that's going on at Nebraska. <laughs> Thank you, Rico, and thank you all again for, for hanging out with us here on Lockdown Huskers. And, again, I, I like to preface this by saying uh, not having all the answers is not required, but let's get to the right questions, and maybe we can we can all get smarter together. That's what Lockdown Huskers is here. And, again, this weekend will be a busy week. This weekend – this week will be a busy week. The weekend will be busy. Uh, to understand that Dylan Rail, uh, you know, getting in Friday – uh, some folks are expecting decisions and more news on Sunday. Sunday certainly has uh, a, a circle around it, a couple of things going on as well. Uh, big basketball weekend for both men's and women's programs. The women's volleyball team uh, in Tampa for the Final Four, volleyball Final Four, lots in play. And amongst them would be the hope that Sunday there's some information being shared. That lets us know who is in control, who is in positions of authority and power, 
in the quarterback room, which affects the wide receiver room. And let me say this. Gary McGuire had an opportunity to, to, to bump into him at an airport, and I wanted to share with him this. I can't possibly imagine what it's like inside the head of Garrett McGuire. I'd love to know. But that young man at a program like Nebraska, and there aren't many like it, where he's in the vacuum and he's under the scope and he's under watch and he's asked to lead in a, a room in a program that there's some divas in the wide receiver room. Goes, it's part of the deal. The quarterback room's in and out affects the wide receiver room. And the Kyle McCord thing, look, Julian Fleming was a part of the conversation. There have been some JUCO uh, commitments, uh, some other folks who were in the conversation. But, look, he's on the road Christmas shopping too. Garrett McGuire has to go out and figure out what's going to make the wide receiver room worthy and attractive to top-flight quarterbacks. The receivers, look, the, the who you throw the ball to as a quarterback is, is 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 right up there. There's who's calling the plays, what the system is, who's going to protect me, and then what do I have to throw to. And given the day, hour, minute drill, that priority pyramid changes. If you ponder yourself and consider yourself as a potential NFL talent, you need some dudes to throw to. And the guys that look, listen, every quarterback that's making a transfer portal D, uh, consideration on the list is okay, who do I get to throw the ball to? Who's going to make me look good? Who's going to help me become the greater version of myself? And that's a big deal. And Garrett McGuire has to, again, and I don't think most coaches think of this as burden, but the responsibility of having a room that not only represents in the highest standard in your mind and how you work, but that also comes into play with the, the quarterback room, the offensive coordinator, and the offensive line. The running game, we talked about the running game yesterday, that it's a big deal. But the receiver room, Garrett McGuire in the receiver room, look, you, there's some heavy luggage that's got to be put in play. But Nebraska to have the kind of success that they think they need uh, and want to have in 2024. The quarterback room is still fluid. We don't know yet. I guarantee you the wide receiver room is having a, a solid impact on the decisions being made in the quarterback room. That's just how it works. Again, live from Tampa. I'll, I'll close this with the three words we love so much. And shout out to the women's volleyball team. Hey, gang. Go. Oh.